In cities all across the world today, protesters are taking to the streets in record numbers, demanding their leaders reduce greenhouse gas emissions to address climate change. William Brangham talks with several young people in this movement to understand what they want and how they're going about it. His report and the conversation to follow is part of our contribution to covering Climate Now, a global collaboration of more than 300 news outlets to enhance coverage of the climate story. From Germany to Australia to South Africa, and even with armed guards in Afghanistan, record numbers of people all over the world are on strike for the climate, angry that their governments won't acknowledge the crisis and worried about their own future on a warming planet. Millions of protesters today demanded immediate action. The climate crisis in totality is destroying my future. And I don't think we can hope to have jobs or have a nice future when our existence on this earth is not guaranteed. It's a protest unique not only for its size, but for those leading it, young activists, many leaving school today to make their point. The movement you see here today began over a year ago, and most of these protesters would credit one Swedish teenager for getting it all started, 16-year-old Greta Thunberg. Last fall, Thunberg started skipping school on Fridays to demonstrate outside the Swedish parliament building. Her sign read, School Strike for Climate. Since then, she's become a global celebrity of sorts, quietly leading massive rallies and confronting world leaders in brutally frank terms. On the chairman of the full committee, like she did in front of Congress this week in Washington. I don't want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to the scientists. And I want you to put, unite behind the science. And then I want you to take real action. My first initial thought was that it is about time that someone said that. 14-year-old Alexandria Villasenor is one of the millions of young people who followed Thunberg's lead and joined this movement. The young people of the United States are declaring the era of American climate change denialism over. Via Senor was moved to action after a trip back to her home state of California was cut short by last year's deadly wildfires. She's now been on her climate strike in front of the United Nations headquarters in New York for 40 straight Fridays. We'd hang out with friends or we'd go out to movies or we'd go shopping and we're giving up a lot of that. But I think that shows how committed we are to organizing and how committed we are to fighting for a future. 17-year-old Gie Bastida is another member of this movement. She left Mexico with her family four years ago after she says heavy rainfall flooded her hometown. Like many of her fellow activists, Bastida's message is to policymakers. We don't need you to talk and talk and say, that you're going to pass this resolution or not, or because resolutions and declarations are just words. We need you to pass policy. We need you to pass laws. And we need them to happen now. This broad network of activists want several key things. Passage of a Green New Deal with its shift to 100 percent renewable green energy by 2030, protection and restoration of half the world's lands and oceans, stopping deforestation within 10 years, ending subsidies for industrial agriculture, and halting resource extraction on indigenous lands. Madeline, Ahead of today's strike, Bastida and Via Senor joined Thunberg and others this week in Washington. They had a packed schedule, speaking on panels, meeting members of Congress, rallying in front of the Supreme Court. And everywhere they went, they were surrounded by handlers and cameras. As the climate crisis gets worse, more of us are feeling it and more of us are living it. It's not something that is going to happen in a hundred years. It's something that is happening right now to us. Another young activist in Washington this week was Vic Barrett. This college student is a plaintiff in the landmark case Juliana versus the United States, a lawsuit filed by over a dozen young Americans alleging the U.S. government has failed to adequately address climate change. If successful, the case could force the government to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. It's currently waiting on an appeals court ruling. We're constituents. We live in this country. Um, and so we're suing the U.S. federal government for violating young people's disproportionately constitutional rights to life, liberty, and property. They've discounted our lives incredibly. 
in all the choices that they've made, and we're finally just standing up and saying, you can't do this. One lawmaker in their corner is Senator Ed Markey, Democrat of Massachusetts. He's a co-sponsor of the Green New Deal resolution. What would you say to the critics who say, what on earth are our leaders doing taking advice from teenagers? Well, on this, the teenagers are right, uh, and the uh, older generation has been wrong in terms of their lack of attention to this issue. 19-year-old Katie Eater is another part of the movement. Originally from Milwaukee, but now working full-time in Los Angeles, she co-founded the Future Coalition, which organizes young people around a number of issues, including climate change. Young people feel like that nobody is doing anything, and so the responsibility is on, on our shoulders. And I think it's really important to acknowledge how sad that is. These kids who are really kids, you know, they're middle school, young high school, and they sh honestly should not have to be planning protests. They shouldn't have to be lobbying their representatives. They shouldn't have to be trying to convince adults that they need to do something so we have a future. Dana Fisher studies social movements in America. She's a sociology professor at the University of Maryland, and she's collected extensive data on this youth climate movement. Her surveys point to their potential impacts. Most of these young activists will be of voting age by the 2020 election. In some ways, the school strike for climate change is what the sit-in was for the civil rights movement. It is a tactic that is doable for people in a very local way where they can get involved in a movement and as it diffuses, it can have a huge effect. But Fisher says the challenge to this movement, to force a re-engineering of how the world creates and uses power and to do it quickly, is enormous. It would involve converting all gas-powered cars to electric, closing all coal-fired power plants, and dramatically ramping up wind and solar and even nuclear power. They are asking for substantive transformative change, but they are talking about doing it through traditional political channels. And we have seen very few examples of when that's worked in our country or globally. And usually that happens around a uh, mobilization around a war. I mean, some of the activists are calling for a mobilization on par with World War II, right? And that's the kind of social change we're talking about. The timing of today's march was intentional. Monday is the opening of the UN's Climate Action Summit, where heads of government from around the world will meet in New York to present their plans for curbing greenhouse gas emissions. When we talked with Greta Thunberg last week, she stressed that for now, this movement needs the adults to act. We are not doing this because we think it's fun. And uh, we are not doing this to ease on your conscience. We are not the ones who are going to solve this. We are not the ones who are going to provide you with solutions. We are the ones who demand everyone to listen to the United Science and to take their responsibility. When people see us on the streets with the river of students protesting, I want them to see that and realize that that is what change looks like and that they need to be a part of it. 